Hi, welcome to this video which will be your buyer's guide telling you what to look out for when purchasing solar panels. On this channel Synergy Files we aim to inspire budding engineers and technicians for a better more sustainable world so please do subscribe to our channel. Coming up in this video we will be looking at conventional solar panels and also some of the latest solar panels to arrive in the market. So to benefit from this video fully, please do watch it till the end. When looking to buy a solar panel, one can be overwhelmed by the choice alone, leave aside the technicalities. There are many types of panels by multiple manufacturers. The three most common types are monocrystalline silicon, polycrystalline silicon, and thin film panels. Two decades ago in the 1990s, the market was dominated by monocrystalline panels, which represented nearly 80% of the market share. However, both polycrystalline and thin film panels since have made huge inroads because of their lower cost. In terms of efficiency, monocrystalline panels are the most efficient, followed by polycrystalline and then thin film panels. But we have to tell you that efficiency should not be a criterion for buying solar panels unless you are restricted for space. The only advantage of high efficiency is that the panels provide more energy over a smaller area. You would end up paying a huge premium for getting that extra efficiency. There are other factors that should be looked at, for instance, weather conditions. If you get a lot more direct solar radiation, that is the light of the sun when there are no clouds, then monocrystalline silicon panels work the best. If you live in an area where weather is dominated by diffuse radiation, or in other words, you get a lot of cloud cover such as in UK or Philippines, then polycrystalline panels or thin film panels work better. One other advantage of thin fill panel is they handle heat better. So when the weather gets too hot, thin fill panels are less faced by heat and provide a near consistent output. Polycrystalline panels are the most dominant panels in the market. They represent nearly 55% of the total solar panel sales today. Polycrystalline panels have a slightly lower life compared to monocrystallines. Manufacturer generally put a 20 year warranty on polycrystalline panels but put a 25 year warranty on monocrystalline panels. Note that monocrystalline panels can be purchased for efficiencies up to 23%. The range of efficiencies for monocrystalline panel is 17 to 23% whereas the range for polycrystalline efficiency is in between 14 to 16%. Thin film panels efficiency is in the range of 12 to 17 percent. If there's a crunch in silicon supply in the future, then thin film panels will overtake silicon solar panels in the market. So now let's look at emerging solar panel technologies. Many of you might have heard of multi-junction solar cells. They are the highest efficiency solar cells and are used in satellites with efficiency values of over 44 percent. The idea of a multi-junction solar cell is very simple. They have layers of two or more different types of solar cells on top of each other. This is done to convert most of the electricity into light. As noted earlier, even in the best of solar panels, only 23% energy is converted into electricity. The remaining energy is lost as heat. In a multi-junction solar cell, it is made sure that the amount lost as heat is minimal. This is done by having layers of solar cells stacked on each other. A portion of light is absorbed by the first layer after which the light passes on to the next layer where a different portion of light is absorbed, so on and so forth. They are very expensive and therefore utilized in space application. However, recently they have started appearing in terrestrial applications. Some of the manufacturers for multi-junction solar cells are listed in the description box. These companies sell panels only in large quantities, but for hobbyists, used cells can be obtained. The second type of cells that are upcoming and hold a lot of promise are the hybrid solar panels. Again, the idea here is to use the remaining 80 to 85% energy in light that is lost as heat. In hybrid solar panels, Solar PV cells are stacked on top of 
water heaters. The hybrid solar panel therefore provide electricity as well as heat and will be very useful for European climate. Another new technology that is already available in the market is the smart panel. The smart panel comes with a DC optimizer built into the junction box of the panel. The idea is to take the MPPT or the maximum power point tracking to the panel level. Note that the MPPT system tries to maximize the output of the panel even in adverse weather condition. One thing that can be noticed is that panels are getting bigger over time. A decade ago they were available in sizes of 80 to 100 watts. Today they are available for sizes and capacities of 250 to 300 watts and therefore even if a single panel gets under shade it could bring down the output of the whole system significantly. With smart panels this problem is alleviated. They are about 50 to 60 dollars higher in price compared to a normal panel. However, they are worth the added cost because of the benefit they will bring over the lifetime of the panel. DC optimizer smart panels have been reported to increase the output by 20%. Lastly, we have the flexible and portable solar panels. These are panels mounted on a flexible substrate. There are mono and polycrystalline silicon options in flexible panels. However, the highest degree of flexibility is achieved with thin fill panels which can be easily rolled to save space. They are lightweight and are ideal for boats, caravans and motor homes. Whenever you are buying a solar panel, make sure they come with bypass diode in the junction box and also with MC4 connectors which will make your life very easy. Lastly, if you want to use an inverter or a charge controller, then please bear in mind the panel voltage. The total voltage, which will be determined by how you connect the panels, should be a value that is acceptable both to your inverter or charge controller. And with this, the video on buyer's guide to solar panels is concluded. You can click here to get the tips for buying solar panels cheaply, and you can also click here to get the list of the cheapest solar panels in the world. Thank you for your attention.